Welcome to lecture 11. In this lecture, we will show that minimizing the Gibbs free energy of a mixture undergoing a chemical reaction can determine equilibrium concentrations of the components and derive how shifts in conditions affect this equilibrium. This lecture will be broken down into two parts. In the first part, we will define the equilibrium constant K from first principles, and in the second part, we will examine how K, and by extension, the equilibrium concentrations, change when the conditions are modified. At constant temperature and pressure, a reaction mixture tends to adjust its composition until its Gibbs free energy is at a minimum. This adjustment not only is a function of mixing, but also based on the composition of the mixture given a chemical reaction that links the components together. The parabolic plots in the figure below shows the Gibbs free energy versus the reaction coordinate. Each colored line represents a reaction that favors some combination of reactants and products. This is indicated by where the minimum Gibbs free energy is located as systems will tend to move towards minimizing the Gibbs free energy as that is the spontaneous process. For example, the blue line has its minimum close to the pure reactant side of the composition spectrum. This indicates that the reaction characterized by the blue line favors the reactants. Conversely, the green line's minimum is close to the pure product side of the x-axis. Therefore, the reaction characterized by the green line favors the products. Finally, the red curve, with the minimum in the middle, indicates that the equal mixture of reactants and products will spontaneously result. At each of these minima, the system is said to be in equilibrium. A generic chemical reaction can be expressed as some amount of A of species A in the gas phase reacting to form some amount of species B in the gas phase. The change in Gibbs free energy can be expressed as dG is equal to the chemical potential of A times the change in moles of A plus the chemical potential of B times the change in moles of B. Since the change in each component, dN, can be different for each species, we will instead use a common term, dc, to denote the infinitesimal extent of the reaction. This means that each term has to now be weighted by their stoichiometric coefficient. Thus, dg is equal to negative a times the chemical potential of a times dc plus b times the chemical potential of b times dc, where we explicitly give the reactants a negative sign in this case to denote that as that they are being consumed. Dividing both sides by dc and assuming constant temperature and pressure gives d by dc of the Gibbs free energy at constant temperature and pressure is equal to b times the chemical potential of b minus a times the chemical potential of a. The derivative of the Gibbs free energy with respect to the reaction coordinate at constant temperature and pressure is simply the change in Gibbs free energy for the reaction. Therefore, we can make some generalizations. If the chemical potential of the reactants is greater than the chemical potential of the products, then delta G of the reaction is less than zero, and the forward reaction is spontaneous. If the chemical potential of the reactants is equal to the chemical potential of the products, then delta G of the reaction is equal to zero, and the system is at equilibrium. And finally, if the chemical potential of the reactants is less than the chemical potential of the products, then delta G of the reaction is greater than zero, and the reverse reaction is spontaneous. For substances, we have seen that the chemical potential can be written as the chemical potential of some component J is equal to the standard chemical potential of that component J plus RT times the natural logarithm of A sub J, where A sub J is the activity of the substance. Recall that activities are dimensionless quantities where the reference chemical potential is in the standard state and gamma indicates the deviation from ideal conditions. In the table below are the activities for various substances in their standard state, and what we will use for their activity. Note that for a pure liquid and solid we will use an activity equal to 1, meaning that they are already in their standard state. This is because we will assume that a pure solid and a pure liquid are not mixed and cannot mix with another substance, so their chemical potential is not altered from the standard state. The remaining three substances, gas, solute, and solvent, are all easily mixed, and we have discussed their mixing in a previous lecture. In these cases, the activity is gamma times the ideal quantity divided by the standard state and is a unitless quantity. Gamma represents the deviation from ideal conditions. So using the previous example of some gas A reacting to form some gas B, 
we can substitute in our expression for the chemical potential into our change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction expression to write the change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction is equal to B times the standard chemical potential of B plus RT times the natural logarithm of the activity of B all minus A times the standard chemical potential of A plus RT times the natural logarithm of A. And that since we know that the change in Gibbs free energy or the standard Gibbs free energy of the reaction is equal to B times the standard chemical potential of B minus A times the standard chemical potential of A, and if we arrange the natural logarithm terms, what we can get is the change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction is equal to the standard change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction plus RT times the natural logarithm of the activity of B raised to the power of B divided by the activity of A raised by its stoichiometric coefficient A. What we will do now is we will define something called the reaction quotient as that ratio of activities, meaning that it's equal to, in this case, the activity of B raised to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient B divided by the activity of A raised to its power of its stoichiometric coefficient A. And in the end, once we make the substitution for the reaction coefficient into the expression above, what we get is the change in the Gibbs free energy of the reaction is equal to the change of the standard Gibbs free energy of the reaction plus RT times the natural logarithm of the reaction quotient. When the system is at equilibrium, meaning that the change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction is equal to zero, a special case for the reaction quotient occurs. In this case, we will define that at equilibrium, Q is equal to K and our expression becomes zero is equal to the standard change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction plus RT times the natural logarithm of K. And when we rearrange this expression, we get the standard change in Gibbs free energy of the reaction is equal to negative RT times the natural logarithm of K. K is the equilibrium constant. This expression is a very important relationship since one, the thermodynamic properties of the constituent parts can predict the equilibrium concentration of the mixture, and two, the measurement of K allows for the quantification of the standard change in Gibbs free energy for the reaction.